The film is very sincere and what's sweet about it is it, it's not cynical. From this angle, it looks a little bit like you. And yet, it's not saccharine or too sweet. Okay, Luke, go. Mothman and Alan Jordan, in those genres, my intention in those was on a darker, more detached, like, I want to unnerve people and I have this skill at doing that. This is way more personal. I was coming out of a place where I wanted hope and the essential theme of the movie is that a hopeless man finds hope. I've always had faith that when the right guy, when Henry Poole emerges, it'll be clear. There was three elements. It was the romantic love aspect in his relationship with Dawn. There was the, the comedic chops, but not broad, but in that kind of, you know, uh, the way Jimmy Stewart could do drama and comedy. It was like Jimmy Stewart and Jack Lemmon were kind of our models for it. Sometimes I don't like to talk either. I can tell within five seconds of meeting an actor whether they have that inner life, and within five seconds, and feeling Luke, I was like, that's it. Said, you want to do it? Great. And it quickly, you know, everybody quickly kind of came on board. What about the other house? On day one, the way he carried himself, oh. the way he spoke, I looked at Mark and I said, oh, that's Henry. It's perfect. Luke's eyes say everything about who Henry Poole is. He's one of these rare actors that can do more with, with his eyes than most actors can do with a page of dialogue. I think he brought himself. It wasn't just him playing it. I believe he, in a deep, deep way, connected deeply to who Henry was. That's what you want. You want somebody where the line between himself and the character blurs. Anyhow. He is, like, so laid back. I like to imagine what he would be like if he was in a building and the building was on fire. It just seems like he'd be like, hey. I don't want to alarm you, but the building is on fire. We should all get out. <laughs> like, I can't imagine him sprinting anywhere. He's very laid back. He's so available, you know, as an actor. He's from Texas. He's got kind of like this southern kind of kindness, but yet you look at him and he's really involved. He's not in a hurry, but yet he, there's a lot going on. It's been interesting to watch Luke kind of progress as the character. Every day, sitting at the monitor, you see the little choices that Luke is making and, and how he and Mark are navigating the, the smallest little detail with the character that matters in a character film like this. You know, you think of George Lopez, like his show, like the comedy, the stand-up. It seems like it, it could almost be a leap to kind of play this kind of quiet, like very centered priest. I'm Father Vincent Salazar from St. Ramos Catholic Church. George is, in some ways, an unexpected casting choice. It's just such a different part for me that this is the perfect thing to do now that the TV show is over, is to do something that people don't expect you to do. The scenes with him, there's always kind of at the point of the movie where Henry Poole's kind of raging. George and I would laugh about it because, you know, I would be like so angry at him and like not believing and he was always just kind of like doing this to me, which is like the worst possible thing someone can do when you're like losing your temper is like be very kind to you. You kind of want them to like yell back at you and George was always blinking very slowly. Mr. Poole, I apologize. You know, I'm not a peaceful dude. I'm not really crazy and most times I'm you know, really kind of obnoxious like anybody would be. I met with a, with a guy, Father Garrett, and spent a little time with him, and uh, the more time I spent with him, I really kind of got zeroed into my own tranquility and peace. I found playing this guy uh, very calming. <laughs> we'll see how long it stays after the movie's over, but uh, it's pretty calming now. Esperanza is played by Adriana Barazza. Uno. Dos. I saw Babel when it came out. I ran out of the theater. I called Mark Pellington. I said, this is the woman. This is the woman we've been talking about. I, there is no doubt in my mind. And this incredible serendipitous series of events happened. Once Luke became attached to the film, Adriana's agent came to us. And she met with Mark. Okay. And I mean, they gave her the part in the room. Five minutes of meeting her and just seeing her smile. and. She was amazing. It was one of the best working experiences I've ever had was to get the chance to work with her. Adriana was a star in Mexico, but this, along with Bobble, was one of her first Hollywood movies. 
Esperanza is like, um, I, I don't want to say in camera, like, but because maybe the, I have a beep. Oh my God, I don't want to say like a pain in the ass. Really. She just kind of keeps prodding Henry Poole, and she and I would laugh because every time I turn around, she would be there like, Mr. Poole, Mr. Poole, I'm like kind of driving this guy crazy. Thank you, Mr. Poole. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. She has this little kind of bright light that keeps prodding him along. I think she brings an innocence to Esperanza. When she plays the role, there's this sort of sweetness and you forgive her for everything that she does. And although she's so annoying to Henry and she's really getting in the way of his life, he's totally disarmed by her and there's not much he can do just because she's so charming. And I think that's just, that's Adriana. <laughs> I'm Donna. Hi. Hey. Nice to meet you. Rada, just from rehearsals on, I just felt was so good in the part. It just seemed like a hard part to play, like a single mom who's kind of filled with this sadness, and Rada is so attractive. You know, I thought, you know, will that come across? And, but she, she again, like Adriana, just such a good actor that uh, he really uh, kind of believed her in the part. Really? There's so much going on on a set with the lights and the camera and the sound and people being around. It, sometimes it's tough just to feel like you're actually two people talking. Are you Stay actually here. considering saying no to a six-year-old girl with actual words coming out of her little mouth? I did have that feeling with Rod and Mitchell to where we, I felt like we were able to kind of lock in together and kind of do a good job. We need a last look for Adriana. Something like this that does have nuance to it and emotion, you need to have a good director and Mark did such a good job kind of helping me along. He's the kind of person that you can just go up to and hug at the end of a take. It's like a big teddy bear. He's lovely with his actors. Me and Luke and everybody. An actress yesterday did a beautiful, beautiful acting and Mark taught her a, a beautiful things. And I think it's very important because I am a director too. And I think it's very important to support our actors, to tell them, okay, oh my God, you are great. It's like the driving force behind this film. The guy doesn't eat, he drinks rocket fuel. I'm an excitable man. I'm a passionate person. I want to get the stuff. You're going to want to come back with him, and you're going to want to do... feet away. I'd had that experience once before. Initially, like, it threw me off. I was like, are you, you going to stand right there? It's actually fun. I mean, occasionally I will, like, look over and look at him looking at a monitor and think, I hope he likes this. Uh... <laughs> Mark is a guy that will come up to me and say, how do you think that played? He'll come up to the dolly grip and say, what do you think about that? It doesn't matter. He wants to hear everybody's ideas, from the craft service people who are giving us our wonderful meals every day, to the lighting guys, to the camera crew. He's willing to hear it. Albert Torres, the writer, has been on set every day. Being here means everything to me. This is the first film that I'm having made. Seeing it come together like this, seeing all the pieces start melding together, all the performances, all the, the shots. It's a dream come true for me, to be sitting on a set where they're filming a movie that I wrote. Thank God he was there because we made changes or tweaked lines and Luke would go to him. I had no problem. Luke would say, well, what do you think about this? Having Albert Torres around just makes me think, how could you not have that on every movie? The benefit is many times in my case, the wars are difficult for me and he come with me and 
give me an another an another words with the same meaning. Sound like a fortune cookie. <laughs> Cookies don't talk. Luke comes to the set and he comes to the project with a lot of wonderful ideas about his character and about different ways to express the same thoughts that I wrote. What makes you think you know me that well to say something like that? Huh? I don't think that. It's a pleasure to see somebody so involved in it. It is a collaboration. It makes for a better film. It makes for a better story. It's a small movie on one level, it's big thematically, but it's small in that it doesn't have multiple locations. So when you scout and you're finding this place, you have to see the world. A lot of it takes place in one backyard and around one wall, and there's got to be the depth and the angle so you can give some dimension to it. You know, I needed a place that was not going to become visually redundant, but it was a challenge. It's harder to find one place you're shooting a whole movie than multiple locations. Some people say, ah, oh, it's easy, just find a house. Like, no, 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 it's three houses. Is the backyard facing the right direction light-wise? I mean, a lot of, lot of hurdles. So when we found the place, I knew it the instant I got out of the van. I said, this is it. And I looked at the fence there that had slats all broken. I'm like, she wants to be seen. And this wall here, I mean, everything, the depth, I saw that, oh my God, this is where the people, like a theater of viewing, him bringing down the wall and I could shoot it from here. So I got excited about it, and you start seeing the movie and prepping the movie on that place. It really felt like we lived in La Mirada. It's one of those places where it's not like shooting in Manhattan or LA where the bloom has worn off, like having a, a movie crew in your neighborhood. People get excited and they're like, yeah, come by our house, you want iced tea? People offering us, come to my backyard when you wrap, let's have some drinks, swim by the pool. Yeah, you can park right there and, you know, they come out and they're glad to watch. And La Mirada, it's like it didn't feel like L.A. It's, it's surprising to find a place so close in L.A. that has this sense of community with all the generations living on one street, hanging out. It felt like we were part of the neighborhood, like got to where I recognized people, and this one guy that walked his dog every day. And, like, hey, how's Spike doing today? And be like, oh, Spike's doing good. All the neighborhood kids and all the all the families that live on this street came out to watch and George would just make a beeline for them and stand there and talk to them and sign the autographs and do the pictures and everything and be joyous about it. George, being a Latino American, he's an inspiration to a lot of people. La Mirada, it's a predominantly Latin American community. For people that live here, seeing George, you know, wandering around the neighborhood is a thrill. It's a thrill for me. Yeah, we were a part of the neighborhood down there, and we were there about five weeks, but, you know, it felt like uh, a year. <laughs> Not in a bad way. We're hanging out with Luke Wilson for, for a few days. It was just nice. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm in Hollywood working with Mark Pillington and Luke Wilson. Life isn't bad. <laughs> Everybody in it, the energy in it was great. It's the, I think the subject matter of the movie, the themes of the movie. I mean, we had tons of people working on this movie for peanuts because they love the script, because they love the passion, they love the, what it was about. People want to work on something that means something without being preachy or didactic. It's like, this is about something. This is the kind of piece that you'll be proud to have worked on. I've just finished scenes and they've given me a good feeling where I've walked away and thought, like, gosh, Adrian was so good. Or just like today, I was saying, like, George is a great actor. And the scenes with Rada, the same thing. I've had a good feeling from these people. For Henry, the journey is finding a little bit of hope and a little bit of faith in life. And I think that's the goal here, is that when people walk out of this movie, they can find that if you look for it, if you're willing to open yourself up to it, that life can be hopeful. There's a place for movies that mean something, and you can have a personal relationship with the film. I think that's what Henry Poole has got to be, just a, a personal relationship. When the audience see this character, uh, think, oh my God, I know this woman because she's like me. I, I want, I want, I want this. I think they walk out feeling like Henry does. You know, he sort of goes in there grim and comes out, you know, with a sense of hope and a sense of lightness and a sense that, you know, it's fun. It's fun to be alive. Go all the way around. Boom. Oh.